Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. That's my website. Um, I thought I'd just mention it because uh, some people do ask me what it is. So it's jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Yeah. So, uh, here we are. It is Sunday, uh, the 20. Is it the 25th? It's the 31st on Friday. So, 31st, 30th on Thursday. 29th on Wednesday, 28th on Tuesday, 27th on Monday, so it's the 26th today then. Hello and welcome to the 26th of January 2020. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Hope you're well. Yeah. So as I speak to you, I have my uh, tablet standing up. Not the ones I take for the bipolar, but the, you know, Android tablet thing. And it is playing boxing, or it's streaming boxing. And it's Andy Garcia against Red Catch. It's round four of twelve, and uh, it was quite weird. I, I saw I was streaming. I was watching the other fight before this, and it cut out because I'm streaming it, but it's it's uh, the stream doesn't always work. So the one I'm watching now, the audio is about thirty seconds. 40 seconds ahead of the actual uh, visual stuff that's going on so I had to turn the volume down because I can't because basically they're still fighting they're still 30 seconds in the round and the bell's already gone and they're, they're in the corners but you can hear them in the corner but they're still in the ring you know so it's it's weird so I thought I'll, leave, I'll put it on mute, <clears throat> and instead of waiting, it looks like there's a lion. Oh, there's a lady in the in the audience, and she's got like a fur coat or something around her neck, and she looks like a lion. She actually looks like a lion. And she's got like a a false tan. I'm sure I'm sure she isn't a lion. Oh, they're just taking they're just they're just showing um possibly it's the wife of one of the boxers outside the ring watching and the little girl was there and suddenly because she kind of became really self conscious. So that'll be interesting. That's that's quite funny. Um, it might be. To be fair, I shouldn't make fun of the lion lady because it might be one of the boxer's wives or something. Sorry, 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 Mister Boxer, that your wife is a lion. I mean, I don't know. She might not be a lion. I probably isn't actually a lion, but looks like one but the mane was coming out even actually just a really hairy chest (laughs) and just decided to use it as a scarf Uh, who knows who knows Um, probably not but one of the boxers got bright 
I don't know if it's yellow or green, it's almost fluorescent hair, like yellow fluorescent hair, which in a way seems like a silly idea because you're almost giving the other person a target, like a really bright target that they don't even need to really look at because it's just there. Unless he's trying to distract the other one by blinding them with all the light shining off his head. That could be that. That's what Marvin Hagler used to do. He used to have a bald head, but the lights from above used to just... So see, everyone, even the, even the boxer used to wear sunshades that he used to fight against because he couldn't handle it because of all the glimmer from his head. Everyone, all the audience, they just all be wearing sunglasses. Some people would actually be there. The corner people, you know, the ones that... Well, actually, it, wasn't, it was the referee ones. I remember he was... Someone said, where's the referee? And he was, he was laying down on a deck chair, sunbathing, off of Marvin Hagler's head. Now, if Marvin Hagler's listened to this, I love you. Please don't beat me up. Oh. Yeah, I've been watching boxing for years and I know some people think, eee. and uh, oh, he's also got fluorescent green shorts and shoes on as well. See, see I don't, in my memory, right, in going back to like you know let's say 80s 90s sort of my youth my memory of boxers were they just wore black shorts and red gloves that was it I'm pretty sure that was it I, I know in America there, there was the occasional like really flamboyant boxer and we had Nassim Hamid, Prince Nassim Hamid here who was really flamboyant, he was a superstar but most boxers just went into the ring with their shorts and red gloves, big red gloves and you rarely see a pair of red gloves anymore they're all different colours, white Gold, silver, green, fluore fluorescent, yellow. Why? So I'm not sure why. Maybe, maybe I need to research it. But I'm not sure there's a reason. Or maybe they thought, you know what? What we need to do is to uh, let people wear different coloured gloves. Because quite, quite often the gloves match the shorts, you know, the colour of the shorts. I do quite like the PC, the, the way the, uh, <laughs> the um, commentators describe the boxes. It's like, yes... Uh, that boxer is wearing well actually it's quite weird especially even if they're really famous boxers let's say Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua or you could say even famous boxers like Manny Pacquiao or uh, Mayweather or uh, Spence Jr. these days he's one of the most famous boxers or there's, there's so many they always describe them by what they're wearing so, so like Deontay Wilder Deontay Wilder he's the one where, <laughs> wearing gold shorts with um, green trim and it's like and the other bloke is uh, he's wearing brown shorts with uh, red trim like we know who they are 
if someone's watching a fight, a world champion fight, with someone you know, for the world heavyweight championship, or they're watching Pacquiao uh, fighting, you know, defending his world well weight title, or whatever title he's won this week. They don't need to be described by their shorts. Perhaps. I don't know, maybe. If it's two unknown people or someone that maybe you've never heard of, like, okay, it'd be good to know who they are. But sometimes even they have the name on the shorts, like on the ba- or the band of the shorts, like the waistband part. It doesn't even have their name on it. I'm sure it used to in the old days. The old days, God. I'm getting so old. Should not use the term the old days. Yeah, Garcia does not have his name on his um, waistband. But everybody in watching basically is turned up to watch him well not all of them but a lot of them would have turned up to watch him because he's a bit of a he's a big star in boxing in fact when he walked in the ring they were all shouting Danny 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 did I say Danny Garcia or did I say Andy Garcia Danny Garcia Danny 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 Danny, Danny, you know, it's quite a few people. The fight before this was Jarrett Hurd, who was a former unified super welterweight champion who lost his title in the summer. I remember watching that. And he, they were booing him. The audience were booing him because he wasn't doing what he normally does. And, you know, acting really aggressively and, you know, um, having a slugfest. Instead, he decided to box. I mean, it's called boxing. He's allowed to box, you know. But the audience like, oh, don't like that. Um, he won on points in the end. But... I would say he could have gone in there and done what he usually does and he could have knocked the bloke out in one or two rounds. But that's, you know, what what good is that if he wants to get some rounds, if he wants to, you know, get a few rounds under the belt after not being active since May last year. You know, that's 12 rounds. Of uh, it's a nice, it's a nice good spar, isn't it, for him against someone that and the bloke he fought. How cool was this? The bloke was about forty-seven years old. He had twenty-five fights, lost seven, had twelve knock, knocked out twelve people. So he, you know, seven losses is quite a lot, isn't it, on a record? But he's fought a lot of people. And he's, he's a really good test for an up-and-coming uh, future champion. But if you if you put him against someone that's just starting out, he may just well win. But this bloke works full-time. So he boxes part-time. So he works, goes, to, go, goes home, has a light lunch or a light evening meal, then goes to the gym. And then comes home again. That's where he lives. And probably fights once or twice a year. And gets prayed. He probably earns 50 to 100 grand a year probably. Maybe 50 grand a year even. Like, you know, averaging out some of the fights. And there might not be big ones like the one he just had. So even if he earns 50 grand a year. And he fights once a year or twice a year. And that's a brilliant part time job, isn't it? I might just fell in love with him. I was like, 
how cool would that be? He's a really good boxer, but not world level, you know, in the sense of, he's, I think if he's just not good enough to be a world champion, it just doesn't seem to be at that level. But he can he can mix with the best of them, you know. Yeah, he must be able to give his family a really lovely life. Because he does what he loves doing, plus he works. And yeah, I don't know, I just thought that would be really cool to have that kind of... And I suppose I, suppose I, I kind of... Because he's my age, nearly. He's 47. Unless he was 37, but I think they said he was 47. And the parody said to Jarrett Hurt, do you mind that I'm 47? I think Jarrett Hurt said, to, to his opponent said, well, if you don't mind, I don't mind. And they cuddled. I don't know if they cuddled. I like to think they did. And... I don't know, it was, it just seemed really, really naughty of the audience to, to be sort of like booing them, like don't boo, stop it, you can't, you know, it's boxing, it's about skill, it's not always about hurting someone, you know, it's, although Andy, Andy Garcia, I don't know why I keep calling him Andy. I think there might be an Andy Garcia or a boxer. This is Danny. He has hurt him already, actually. Um, so it's going to be, I would say it's going to be a stoppage. They'll stop it. Well, it might go, it might knock him out, but I reckon they're going to stop it. The white, either the white towel chucked in or the referee will stop it because he's too, taking too much. Too many punches. Thing is, Danny Garcia. I mean, you may not know who he is, but uh, if you're a boxing fan, you probably you will probably know. He's uh, he's just got a tremendous punch. There's not a boxer that he couldn't knock out. If he connected, he'd knock anyone out. But he has been beaten twice. Um, but you know it's not all boxers are going to give him the opportunity to hit them you know some will be just be able to get keep out of the way of that big 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 right hand well to be fair I think he can hit with both but he can hit with both hands you don't get any one armed boxers generally but he's very but he's a bit old now in boxing terms He's 33, and I mean, you can be older, but it's rare that people of that age go on to be, because he, he's former two-weight world champion. Now he's he wants to get another world title challenge. This is Danny, and uh, my mate Danny. And he, you know, he's going to be fighting people 10 years younger than him now, or maybe six years younger, who are in the prime. So at 33, a heavyweight, 30, 31, 32, that can be a prime for some people in the heavyweight division, like late 20s. Because probably maybe because of the strength, because there's a lot of strength. Someone of thirty, uh, sort of seems to be the someone that's really fit seems to be at their sort of strength prime. Sometimes when they hit thirty, there's a big, it's a big slide down though. <laughs> Once you hit thirty, sometimes. But then there's those that defy the odds, like Bernard Hopkins, or as they call him in America, Bernard Hopkins, but we say Bernard here. 
uh, although I'd call him Bernard if I was face to face with him uh, <laughs> oh yes and uh, I'd call him whatever he wanted me to call him and he he won I don't know how many different world titles he won he definitely won the middleweight title and he held that for one of the longest periods he also won the light heavyweight title and he was I think he was 48 so he was the oldest person in history to win a world title and in one of his fights at that old age well at that age the they were making such a big deal about him being so old and they were mocking him and his opponent was mocking him in the pre-fight interviews saying oh, you haven't got a chance you're an old man are you gonna do you want to help with your zimmer frame and you know that kind of stuff um be careful of you <laughs> be careful of your hips um you know so do that kind of stuff and uh do you want to do you want to have the <laughs> do you want to have a break so you can uh talk about the war <laughs> the good old days um, but anyway, what um, what Bernard Hopkins did is not only did he win the fight, he, in between rounds, to show that he wasn't old, he did press-ups. <laughs> he was doing press-ups between the rounds. So while the other bloke, the other boxer was having his eye pushed in with the ice pack and having water and you know being given motivational chats and stuff you can do it just remember hit him hit him keep hitting him stop getting it hit him hit him back that kind of stuff I imagine that they say to each other um, Bernard or Bernard was doing press ups and the audience were just going wild. It was so funny. Um, but not many boxers get to do that. Not press-ups, but... Um, to go on for such a long time. But two that I have is... Manny Pacquiao. And... Uh, Mayweather Jr. And although Mayweather Jr. is retired, he's probably got to be 41 now, 42. Pacquiao is still going. And he's, I think he's about 39, I think. 38, 39. Which is old in boxing terms. Not many boxers get to to get to be in the ring at that age it's just really really rare and he's the world champion or a world champion and he holds a record for having the most winning the most titles in different weights of any other boxer in history and he's just phenomenal no one else fights like him so yeah that's my little Oh, this is going to be about boxing. This is the good thing about this is really boring for people that don't like boxing. So I can talk about a subject that I love, and those listening are going to be bored, completely bored, totally bored. Oh. I should just say, well, I shouldn't, don't have to say anything, do I? But I might say, uh, I did a live broadcast on Facebook yesterday. No, no, today, early hours today. It was, was it half past one in the morning? It's now about, what time is it? It's now 5.08 a.m. And the 
the what was I going to say yeah it was quite nice because quite a few people came on and chatted with me uh, so that was nice so if you go to my Facebook page it's on there it was just a nice little chat I don't know how long it lasted for probably half an hour perhaps 40 minutes something like that it was just a like, nice little cosy hello uh, someone came on and left, put a message saying thank you for what you do and I've been listening to you since 2006 and I, and I, I said like, at last I've got evidence because I mean, this is what I say on the video, right? Some, you know, I talk about having been doing this since 2006. Since I was 35 years old. I'm now 49. And uh, I almost feel like I'm lying. But it's true. I really have been doing it for a long time. Not this particular podcast, but, you know, making recordings, making videos and stuff like that this you know hypnosis -y, sleepy stuff sleepy so yeah it's quite cool I quite um, it feels nice in my first sleep recording uh, the first sleep video I uploaded to MySpace which would be 2006 and then in 2007 I think it's 2007 but it might have been 2006 I lose track you know 2006 uh, or was it I don't know but YouTube and Facebook came along Maybe it was 2007, but possibly it was 2006. And that's when I started uploading uh, videos and audios to, uh, you know, to YouTube and stuff like that. It might have been 2007. I lose track. I do lose track. I'll put it this way. It was in a different century. No, it wasn't, was it? It was in a different decade. <laughs> That's it. A different decade. A different century. Now, a different century is when I st started studying hypnosis. That was the different century. Uh, 19... What was it? 1998. That's when I first started studying hypnosis so yeah 22 years this month actually I bought a bought two books on hypnosis I'd already been listening to audios on about NLP Neuro Linguistic Programming and hypnosis is part of that and then I bought two books on hypnosis and I readed them then what was it now it's 98 so 98 I did a an NLP course at, at uh, what was it called City University in London City University in East London um, and I think one of the evenings was a Tuesday and then one of the evenings was a Thursday because it was it was like a year long thing and or I think yeah so basically it was like during term term time but in the evenings so that was my first uh, first uh, I don't know kind of 
physical introduction to hypnotic techniques and NLP as in practicing with the other people uh, in the group so yeah it was quite cool and then 1999 I did the practitioner and the master practitioner in NLP I also did a a course in hypnosis as well which was uh, oh, what do they call it? It's, it was a five, or was it a seven day course? Five or seven days, very intensive, all day, every day for, and it's quite a small group, probably twenty of us, but it was very intensive. Uh, with what was his name? It was, yeah. Michael Breen, I think it was, yeah. And he was in partnership with Paul McKenna. So it was quite cool, it was really good. And just seems weird, it's so long ago. Such a long time ago. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be here doing this. Unless, I mean, who knows? I might have got to the point in my life when I just realised I was really boring. And start thinking, I know what I'll do. I'll make a recording. And I'll record myself being boring. I'm not sure if that ever would have happened. Outside of... Um, if I hadn't spent years making hypnosis recordings I mean basically yeah I did what, 16, 12 years of making hypnosis recordings for sleeping and other things before I started doing this podcast yeah Now, I used to see, I go back to the boxing and I remember trying to think back what were my first memories of watching boxing. And there was a couple of fight, a couple of like big events when I was a kid. There is Barry McGuigan winning the world title. And again, for those that... For people, yeah, not everyone's going to perhaps know who he is, but he was a superstar in this country. A superstar. Superstar boxer. He was the, the most famous boxer that we had at that time. Um, when he won the world title. So I remember that. I, I, I don't remember it, but I vaguely remember it. But my memory of uh, Barry McGuigan was watching him fight Steve Cruz, I think his name was, in something like Panama or something. And it was early hours in the morning. I watched it live. I was 15. And I was in my living at my stepmum's mother's flat sleeping on a camper bed so I stayed up and watched it live really low volume so that her mum didn't come in and turn it off which she liked to do if she could and uh, Baron McGuigan basically got dehydrated it was like 100 plus degrees and he never really recovered from that he lost the fight on well, I'm not sure how the loss was it might have been stopped but if that fight had been that boxing match had been anywhere else at a normal temperature Barry McGuigan would have won 100% 
I really feel it, hundred percent. Because he was a better boxer. He was just way better. But someone from Northern Ireland, or from England, or from Ireland, or from anywhere in this territory, this kind of air part of the world, Wales, Scotland, anywhere. We're not used to extreme heat. I mean extreme heat. But someone that lives in a place with extreme heat and they'll grow up there and they live high level above sea, you know, very and this they're acclimatized to it. So they got that advantage. That's why when I when I get in the ring, I'm not fighting in extreme heat. I've decided when I become the the oldest world champion in history at seventy three. Oh, there's some old bloke that they're still fighting. There's some old bloke with glasses on. I say old, and he's probably in his fifties or sixties or whatever. He had the look of complete happiness on his face. <laughs> really, really happy. <laughs> okay. Excuse the chair. Oh, brilliant! It's now been stopped. Either that has gone to the end. So the thing cut out. The stream just cut out, so I had to reboot, and I've got no idea what's happened. Either it's gone to the end of the fight, and they're just gonna, Danny's gonna win on points, or Danny's just knocked him out, and that's why they've gone. That's why they've kind of finished. Either way, it's the end of the fight. I think. Is it? Keeps cutting out. I wouldn't mind if I was using the internet for anything else, but I'm not. Well, apart from the websites that are on my laptop, but that's just. I can't be using up any energy or any of the bandwidth. Ah. Uh. Sometimes the internet just cuts out. But luckily, recording these, I use an app. So I can record it. I don't need the internet to record it. But I need the internet to upload it. Which is okay. Unless I go live. If I lie, if I go live, then the internet needs to be connected the whole time otherwise it cuts off I suppose kind of obvious huh. I'm just seeing an advert which looks very strange Okay. Um, what other book? Oh yeah, Ali, Muhammad Ali and Larry Holmes, which was I think nineteen seventy-eight, possibly. Uh, maybe nineteen nineteen eighty even. I don't know, but Larry Holmes uh, won that fight very easily and uh, Ali was way over the hill by then he was you know he'd lost his mojo but what's weird is what isn't mentioned in boxing this isn't mentioned in in the history books it is is a reality but um, Mike Tyson won the world heavyweight championship from Trevor Burbick 
and that's a famous fight. He won the world title. You know, he knocked Trevor Burbick down. Burbick got up, and his legs just wobbled, and he he basically fell all around the ring. It's a very famous scene in the, the boxing history. And they almost seem to portray Trevor Burbick as not being a particularly good fighter. When first of all he was he was the world champion, but he didn't get any respect for being the world champion. He was all focused on Mike Tyson and all that stuff. He being the youngest heavyweight champion of the world in history and <clears throat> And uh, actually, the reality was Trevor Burbick was the last person to beat Muhammad Ali. That was Ali's last fight, and Trevor Burbick won. Trevor Burbick fought Larry Holmes for the world title. He didn't win, but he was good enough to challenge for it. And they had a big historic you know bust up before the fight and Larry Holmes jumped off a car <laughs> that's kind of weird again this was in the 80s so Trevor Burbick wasn't just uh, just someone that Mike Tyson knocked out Trevor Burbick was actually uh, you know he was a world champion, but he just didn't. I think he just didn't get the respect that I think he deserved. That even though he was beaten by Mike Tyson, I don't think any person on the planet would have stood up to Mike Tyson on that night. He'd have knocked. He'd have knocked himself out. You know, he's. It was that. He could. He could have knocked down a building building shaped like an elephant I don't know why it's shaped like an elephant but so and you've got these little connections of different people and like different boxes so you got for example Frank Bruno he was one of the biggest boxers in English history most famous boxers. He's a heavyweight boxer. He challenged for the world title one, two, three times and lost three times. And on a fourth attempt, he won. And then he lost it again against Tyson. Uh, who he'd already lost before, um, before, you know. So he won the title on the fourth attempt. But very famous boxer in England. He's a very big star and very lovable, and everyone, you know. But also, he's he has bipolar, and he's now an advocate for mental uh, illness or mental health issues. And he's even got his own boxing gym now that I think he's opened. He's got a charity and everything to as an advocate for mental health. So that's really, he's a really cool person. And the weird thing is the connections between him and the people that uh, he fought. Because he got beaten by Bone Crusher Smith, knocked him out, he got knocked out by Tim Witherspoon, who he, 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 who was the world champion. He got knocked out by Mike Tyson, who was a champion. He got knocked out by Lennox Lewis, who was a champion. So he'd already been beaten four times, but but gone for the world title three times and then on a fourth attempt he won then he got knocked out again by Mike Tyson so 
but it's really weird you're looking at the people that knocked him out they're all connected Bone Crusher Smith knocked out Tim Witherspoon so both of those people knocked out Frank Bruno okay so what's the, what's the other connection Bone Crusher Smith knocked out Tim Witherspoon Mike Tyson beat Bone Crusher Smith to win one of the world titles didn't knock him out couldn't knock him out but he beat him on points and Mike Tyson was knocked out by Lennox Lewis so all those people were connected in that way in it weird and another little connection is Frank Bruno won the world heavyweight title against Oliver McCall yet a couple of years earlier Oliver McCall or a year earlier or I don't know yeah it was I don't know how long before Oliver McCall knocked out Lennox Lewis to win the world heavyweight title and then Bruno came along and beat Oliver McCall to win the world title. And then Bruno, then Tyson came along and beat Bruno to win the world heavyweight title back. And then later on, Lennox Lewis knocked out Tyson. And even stranger, a stranger, but every single fight that Frank Bruno lost, he was winning on points. He was ahead on points until he got clipped, until he got hit, his guard went down and that was the end of it. His hands went down, that was the end of it. But every fight he was winning on points. A very notable one would be against Lennox Lewis. He was well ahead. He was beating Lennox Lewis almost easily in Wales. I think it was in Cardiff in who knows what year it was. 95 maybe. Something like that. 94, 95. 93. I can't remember until Lennox Lewis caught him and Bruno's just then he his arms went down and that was it um, so I suppose what I'm saying is Bruno was a heck of a much better boxer than he was given credit for So there, that's what I'm saying. I mean, there was a period of time when boxing used to be on telly. In, what was it? The, it used to be on Saturday afternoons when I was a kid. But it, uh, I never found it particularly interesting because there weren't anybody of, that I knew. There wasn't that excitement value. Occasionally they'd show a world champion fight, you know, like a pre-recorded one. And there may there may have have been like world title fights that were shown late at night, but I was a kid and I never got to see them. But for some reason I was allowed to stay up to watch the Ali fight. So I think cause my dad liked boxing as well. So we watched that. We stayed up and watched it. It was kind of a... It was a big event. It was a really big event. Because it was Ali's attempt to win the world title again. For the fourth time. And everyone loved Muhammad Ali. So at that point. So yeah. It's, well, I fight... 
in the my memory, my first real memory of getting really excited about boxing was with Frank Bruno. But often I'd have to listen to it on a radio because it wasn't on telly. So I'd listen to radio, some BBC Radio Sport or something. And then in about 85, Marvin Hagler and Tommy Hearns were getting ready to have a huge fight. But, um, so it was a case of they were both fighting other opponents and the winning of those fights would go on to fight each other. That was kind of the plan. It seemed to be. But it's basically, if they both overcame the fighters, then they would clash. And they did. They both fought each their fighters. I think it was on the same night as well. But I might be wrong. I think it was even on the same bill. The same kind of night of boxing. They both fought together. Not together, but on the, you know, different... Different opponents, not <laughs> not the same time. They just stay your your half of the ring. That's it. You stay your half of the ring. You two. No, it was uh, separate. And then they ended up having their mega fight. Tommy Hearns and Hagler, Hagler and Hearns, and it's. Huge, huge fight worldwide, and I think it was probably Las Vegas or somewhere like that. And it was uh, fight of the year. I think uh, some would class it as the round of best round of all time, or the round of the decade. You know, when they uh, basically win at each other really full on. And that seemed to lead to these huge fights, these big fights, because Leonard then fought Hagler for the world title. And I think Leonard actually came out of retirement to fight Marvin Hagler for the world title, the middleweight title. So I didn't know Leonard. I didn't really, because although I love, I like boxing, I wasn't as into it as I am kind of now, or have been over the years. And also as American, and we didn't get a huge amount of American fights here. It's not like now when you can stream them and you've got box office and uh, got YouTube, you know, so you can watch fights that weren't televised. And um, but I did. I kind of knew who he was. I used to. I used to read the magazines like KO and. Uh, the Ring, The Ring back. So I used to read those magazines because I was, you know, I was, I was interested in the other fighters, people that I didn't know. And uh, anyway, the build up to it was basically that Leonard didn't have a chance against Hagler because Hagler was a true middleweight. He was the best middleweight at that time of all time. He was classed as pretty much the best there's ever been. Although some would argue there's other middleweights from the past that perhaps would have, uh, you know, been better possibly. but And some may argue that middleweights from since Hagler would have been way better than Hagler. Uh, Golovkin. How would Hagler have fared against Golovkin? 
you know, if they were both kind of in their prime. So yeah, it's so there's lots, lots of different. So who else is Alvarez? Yeah, you know, it's lots of different fighters. Uh, Hopkins is another one, the middleweight. What about Junior Jones Junior? How would Hagler have dealt with him? It have it have outpointed Hagler. Very likely. When they're both in their primes. Primes? When they're both in their prime. Roy Jones Jr. In his prime, is there anyone that could have beaten him when he was in his prime? I mean he went from he went from winning a world with the middleweight title, I think the super middleweight title, possibly light heavyweight title, I'm not sure, but he definitely went on to win the world heavyweight title, which is something that I don't think any middleweight's ever done, have attempted it. I think Jap Demp Jap Jack Dempsey attempted it, but didn't didn't. Uh, fulfill the requirements necessary you know it's, it's a big weight difference but then some boxes there might be a middleweight in the ring but when they're out of the ring they're a hell of a lot heavier see I'm I'm like 15 I don't know I'm just under 100 kilos whatever that is in stone but if I was in the gym every day of the week training as a boxer my actual weight would be a lot less you know I might end up losing two or three stone so I might be boxing at instead of being 15 and a quarter stone I might end up fighting at 12 stone or 11 stone, or 10 stone even, who knows? I can't imagine being 10 stone, but I used to be. That's a third of my weight, gone, isn't it? So I'd be a lot lighter with all that training. And what you find is the middle weight, someone who's maybe, I don't know what middle weight is, is it 12 stone, I think? They, when they retire and you see them like a couple of years later they look like a heavyweight because they're not do you know they're not training all the time like they were and they're naturally a lot bigger than what they would you know it's just all the training that kept their, their weight down this is boring I love it this is going to send so many people to sleep. I can't believe he's, he's talking about boxing. For an hour. It's been an hour he's been talking about boxing. Why? Why? So I'm thinking what other boxes. So Leonard did go on and beat Hagler on points. So he won the World Middleweight Championship. And then Leonard and Hearns fought again because they already fought previously. And Leonard won that one. And then Duran, Roberto Duran came along. And he had a massive, um, a big fight as well. So it's those four. They were the four of the biggest boxers in the world. Like uh, famous. Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns and Leonard. So it's kind of, oh. So they all kind of fought each other. Hagler said that, I don't know if he said this, but I'm sure he said, 
If this chump wins, I'm going to quit. I'm retiring. I'm not going to be beaten by this chump. So I don't know if he actually said that, but he did say that he was going to retire if he lost. And he lost, and he retired. And I think he's hired out um, because there's some places where there's not enough sun there's um, like on beaches and stuff so what he does is they hire him to just stand there and kneel down and have the sun shining off his head which then um, brightens up and, and people can sunbathe on the beach even when it's a cold day so he can do that in the winter. So he gets paid quite a lot of money for that. I think you get paid at least $15 an hour. So I think he's happy. And... The, um, what other things does he do? He's... Yeah, they've been doing experiments trying to duplicate his head. So they realised that the, the solar energy that could be <laughs> that could be created would be phenomenal. So the idea is to have Marvin Hagler's head or a duplicate of it, not his actual head, on every roof in the on the planet. And it would in fact they said if they could just get four four of his heads you know just around the planet that would probably uh, the solar energy from those domes would keep the entire world running and I don't know if that's true or not because of his shiny head but it might not be true uh, what other ones I also Leonard fought Danny LaRue and won the world I think it was light heavyweight championship and again like many other fighters he fought on too long and ended up losing eventually Hearns however Hearns however went on to win the world light heavyweight championship so he went on longer than uh, the others and but he fought someone I think it was Dennis Andres and he knocked him out which is an amazing feat when you consider Hearns was a very lightweight he was in the lower levels of weight and he, he managed to fight at light heavyweight and won the world title. But I think what he had in his favour, he was very tall. So he could, and I suppose as he aged, you know, putting weight on probably just happened naturally anyway. So it would have been quite hard to stay at uh, 45 pounds or 40, you know, 30 kilos or whatever he was to start with. <laughs> 30 kilos um, that's as smart as the size of a little dog isn't it 30 kilos oh dear mind you a bag of sugar one kilo bag of sugar so I'm the weight of a hundred bags of sugar sugar is probably a good name for it really not because I'm sweet, but just because of the amount of sugar that's <laughs> rushing through my body at any given moment. Oh. Da, 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 da. I'm just looking at something. Yeah. 
<sighs> Other people that I used to like to watch Nigel Benn, Chris Eubank, Prince Nassim Hamid is which is my favourite boxer, you know, from that period, simply because it was so good. And he was so cocky as well. It was funny. And he became a superstar. And part of that was because of his flamboyancy. Because of... Uh, it's similar kind of to... In America there was someone called Hector Camacho. And he was a superstar over there. And he was very flamboyant. And wore sort of clothes. And, you know, dressed up and stuff. And the scene, Prince Nassim did that as well and it was so good so quick so flashy and uh, brilliant brilliant boxer one of the best ever I would say and he ended up losing his titles to someone um, it's terrible I forget his name and he quit Prince Nassim quit and he lost on points but he quit he said no he, he, we didn't quit straight away he had one fight where he was bored he had a fight which went the distance and he didn't do anything he just went in there went through the motions won it on points but it was almost looked like he wasn't even in the ring like his, his head was elsewhere and then he quit and he said I'm coming back but then he never did at one point he said he was going to come back as a heavyweight but he was I think he was a flyweight or featherweight when he was boxing and uh, he was so great such a great boxer the weird thing about it when he lost he lost to a future like a really really good boxer that went on to win world titles and went on to be a like a boxing star. So if he'd have known that, perhaps he wouldn't have felt so bad about losing, because then, like, he lost to a really, really great boxer. But I heard in an interview a couple of years back, Nassim Prince Nassim said, "Well, the real reason I packed it in because I kept hurting my hands." because I punched too hard and he kept breaking his hands and he didn't he didn't want to go keep going through all that every time so that's why which is fair enough I mean it's up to him isn't it but it's just a shame because he was so good he was the most fun to watch pretty much out of most of the boxers that I've seen So much fun to watch. It was just, it was almost funny as well while he was in the ring. Like a comedy act sometimes. The way he'd just wobble around and, and dance and stuff. And then, you know, we used to have boxing on TV late at night, Saturday nights. Usually the heavyweight title fights would be on free to watch you know if you're willing to stay up till 3 in the morning 4 in the morning on ITV and that's when there was only 4 channels BBC 1 BBC 2 ITV and Channel 4 and then in 2007 It might be late 2006, or I'm pretty sure it's 2007. Channel 5 came along. 1997, sorry. 19, between 96 and 97, uh, Channel 5 appeared. And so in the early 90s, uh, used to get to watch fights on our TV free. 
and then eventually over time a lot of the big fights were just taken up by Sky and I didn't have access to Sky because I was living in rooms I didn't have my own home and I didn't have a satellite dish and you know you, it's, you can't generally move into a, and should, you know rent a room out and then put a satellite dish on the win on the the wall outside it's, uh, so yeah I just I missed out on a lot of stuff a lot of boxing pretty much between 2000 and 2008 so for about 8 years I saw hardly any boxing at all just because I mean I used to watch it online you know YouTube and stuff but occasionally there'd be fights on ITV or BBC One but it wasn't that often Sky seemed to have just monopolised it and then I moved into this place when I was a student when I was at university and occasionally my landlord would invite me down to watch the boxing well not down because I was on the bottom floor anyway but he'd invite me to watch the boxing with him he'd have a couple of his friends there be early hours in the morning and I watched the, like probably three, four fights over the time I was there so again I didn't watch many but it was really nice for him to do that and they were like live in America you know and I continued watching fights on YouTube ones that I missed so it wasn't until I moved in here which would be five years in three months when I started being able to watch boxing on TV again because I had Sky because I moved in I was on EE that was my uh, internet because I moved I had EE internet broadband my other place moved here and I just transferred it but I was getting such a, a slow um, broadcast such a slow I think it was something like f less than 5 megabytes a second it wasn't even fast enough to watch Netflix or YouTube so I just you know I said that they you know they said well, you can keep it if you want, but we'll give you two months free. I said, why would I keep it? This is ridiculous. And he said, yeah, I know. It's like, why, why is it so slow? I don't know. So I said, I'll just... Because before it was fairly fast, but at the other place. I was like, I don't understand it. It makes no sense. So I said, no just cancel it I called up um, Sky and I got I got broadband with them they offered me a package for the TV like a really huge discount on the television all the programs movies and I didn't take the sport package because I don't really watch sport outside of boxing but it gave me once I was with them I was able to buy the the box office boxing you know so when there was a big fight on I could purchase it and watch it on the telly or like now if there's a a night of boxing it might not be a big fight but it might be well it might be a big fight but it's, it might just be a case of purchasing a day pass to watch all the Sky Sport which I sometimes do and I've also got access to the other sports channels 
if I want to buy, if I want to watch a fight. So it's it's opened up, and it's opened up more possibilities with the streaming networks that are around, the streaming technology. I guess like what we're using now. If you're listening to this, it just uh, it's so great. It's really, really good. Which means I can watch those things, uh, the boxing, uh, the big, the big ones. You know, something to look forward to. So yeah, that's it really. <laughs> That's all I've got to say on that subject. So yeah, I'm a, I've been a big, big boxing fan for a long time. And it really, I suppose it really started with, kind of started with Bruno, I guess. And Hagler. But Bruno, Frank Bruno is pretty much the first person that I got excited about that was in the early 80s and then yeah so so we're talking what probably 83 possibly roughly so I said 93 2003 2013 that's so 37 years. Is that right? Yeah, 37 years. So I've been a boxing fan for a quite a, quite some time. It's quite weird. I've been a boxing fan long longer than most, pretty much all of the boxers that are in the ring nowadays. Because most of them are a lot younger than that. And I'm still, I'm still like a little baby, really. I'm only 49, so it's very young. Yes, it is. I don't care what you say, it's very young. It is very young. Stop arguing. It's very, very young. Honestly. Anyway, I'm going to go. I think it's, I hope I've bored you enough with this. So remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye.